In my line of work, presenting the highest quality image is key. Start building your website today at squarespace.com. Use the offer code CARL to get a 10% discount. I'm Carl Taylor, and this is my Squarespace. So today I want to talk to you about polarizing filters. Now polarizing filters are really, really important. And the reason is they're the one filter that you cannot simulate in Photoshop alone. Lots of the other filters you can actually apply effects in Photoshop or in your software that simulate the effects of the filters, but not with a polarizing filter. Now here I've got a polarizing filter screwed onto the end of this lens, okay? So this is a screw thread filter and its diameter matches the size of the diameter of this lens. Now, I'm going to explain what polarizers do for you in a second, but first I just want to show you a couple of differences between them. This is the screw thread polarizing filter. Now this, in my opinion, is a bit pointless. And the reason is, this screw thread filter only fits this lens because it's the right diameter. So what happens when I want to use a different lens that has a different diameter end lens? It doesn't fit. So this is now redundant and it's only good on one lens. So if I've got a variety of lenses, it means I'm gonna to need to buy six or seven of these to match the different lens sizes. That's a bit of a waste of money because polarizing filters are usually quite pricey. The better system to go for is the one that uses an adapter ring. Now that's what this is here. This is an adapter ring that will screw on to the end of the lens. And what you do is you buy different adapter rings in different sizes. And you buy the adapter rings to suit each different size lens that you've got. Now these adapter rings are very cheap. And then what happens is you buy a filter system that uses the slide-in filters. So you have an adapter holder, such as this one, which goes onto the adapter ring, clips on like so. Now this filter holder can hold three filters, and I often use this to hold my neutral density graduated filters, my polarizing filters, or uh, a plain neutral density filter. So this is a really great bit of kit. Now, what it means by doing that is that I've now got a plain polarizing filter here, which is exactly the same as the other one, except this one slides into the adapter holder. Now that means that I can fit this adapter holder, this filter holder with the adapter ring onto all of my my different lenses as long as I have the actual correct adapter ring. Um, now to operate a polarizing filter for it to work you need to be able to rotate it. Now the adapter ring still allows you to rotate the filter because the screw thread one I showed you a little bit earlier also rotates like so but this one uh, works with the adapter by sliding it on the ring. Now what does a polarizing filter do? Well, essentially a polarizing filter is really useful for your landscape work, uh, even for general photography. I use it a lot in culture and people photography. It's got this great benefit of saturating the colors a little bit. It can also remove reflections off the surface of water, off the surface of objects and glass. It saturates blue skies to a deeper blue and makes the white clouds stand out a lot deeper. It's got lots and lots of uses for enhancing even the greens in grass or in trees and foliage and it really does give this super saturated enhanced look to your pictures. One of my favorite filters. I try and use it as often as possible. Now to demonstrate to you what the filter does I've just set up something quick here on the uh, EOS 5D Mark II. Now on the 5D Mark II I can film through this camera so I'm just going to film this sequence ahead of me. I've got a polarizing filter here already on this camera and I'm going to show you the effect of rotating rotating the polarizer so you can see what happens. Okay, so I'm just going to rotate the filter and you can see the effect that it's having. So without the filter, let me just show you what happened there is without the filter, but obviously the filter cuts out two stops of light. So you can see that the picture in camera has changed, so I'd have to darken that down to show you what it would have looked like there. There we go. Now when I put the filter in, you'll see the picture's now too dark, so I'm gonna have to lighten that exposure back up to compensate, and I'll get that to about the right position there. 
And now you'll see as I rotate the filter, watch what happens. You see that the sky, the depth of blue in the sky will change and the contrast of the clouds against the sky will change. But also look at what's happening in the water. Look at what's happening at the reflection in the puddle. Now you can see that it allows me to actually see into the puddle because it's removed the reflective surface off of the uh, top of that water. So it has many uses. You'll even notice that some of the saturation in the colours of the rock vary slightly as well. Now uh, to see this filter to its full effect you need to try it on many different subjects. So we might have a little go in a second and try it on the uh, gloss metal work of, uh, of a car and the, show the windscreens and how it removes the reflections there. But when you're trying this filter out, try it on different things try it on surfaces, try it on sky, try it on water, try it on green foliage. It has multi-purpose uses this filter and it is one of my favourite filters to use. Okay so I'm just going to demonstrate that polarising filter again on the metallic surface of this van. Now it's important to remember that polarising filters don't actually work very well on bare metal but on painted gloss metal like that and on glass they work really well. Now what you'll see looking at that van right now, this is our cameraman's van, um, there's all the reflections going down the side of it. You can see all those reflections shining off the van, off the glass and everything there. Now I'll be able to completely eliminate and remove those reflections with the polarising filter. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hand hold the 5D Mark II and I'm going to set it into video mode and I'm just going to film the side of that van uh, just quickly here. So here I'm filming now and I can see all the reflections on the side of that van and then as I rotate this filter all of those reflections disappear. Look at that, it's incredible. There's the reflections and there they're gone. Now you can see that that's not an effect that you're going to be able to simulate in Photoshop. There's the reflections and there they're gone. Now interestingly while we're at it I'm shooting into the sun and I've got a lot of flare coming into the lens because I don't have a lens hood on. So let's just uh, give you a quick demonstration of uh, cutting out flare. I'm just going to use my hand to block the sun. There you go and you see that flare just clipped out of the shot. Uh, we're probably going to do another separate tutorial on the lens flare but I thought I'd just point it out now. So there you go, that's a, a pretty good look at uh, polarising filters. You've seen what they look like on the sea, on the water and there you can see what they look like on a man-made object. Mm -hmm.